finish. Good morning. We are live. Uh, yeah, barely, but but we are. It's a holiday today, apparently. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, that's right. If it wasn't for Google, I wouldn't be keeping track of anything. <laughs> yeah. I should oh, know this considering I give birth on Memorial Day weekend. Oh, oh there you oh. go. So, so Not yeah, a vibrator, so, just a cell phone, guys. Don't yeah. get excited. There we go. That was Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All righty then. Okay, so good morning, guys. It is May 30th, 2022, and we have this little intro, and we'll be right back. <laughs> sparkling stretch goals i don't know it's it just every every plug that, that we put up uh, i mean there's always like something about it that stands out uh that stands out for me like you know like you know critical blast fire bitch you know wonder dog you know they, they all have there's all something in there that kind of like oh i like that part <laughs> you know it's, like, <laughs> it's just weird it's just weird. So good morning, everybody, to another Monday. Yes, I have my post-it here. Uh, Monday, you know, for everybody who likes to see the post-it, it's right here. <laughs> you know, because I look, look, calendars mean nothing to me. <laughs> it's like it's either work gets done or it doesn't get done. That's all I mark time by. Uh, so welcome everybody to a, another episode of Rage into the Vlogs. Um, so yeah, so uh, our chat, uh, we already have people in the chat. We have, uh, thank you everybody for watching. So who's in the chat, Nita? Who's joining oh, us this morning? Uh, uh, okay, so we got Grant Lankard, Mike oh, Jimmy. Very nice. Oh. Mr. Carl Witzman. Oh, hello. Jody McPhee, Marvin. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Patrick's here. Good morning, Patrick. And that looks like it for now, but there's, right. there's obviously other people here. Well, it is it is right Monday. Now. Everyone's setting up, everyone's cleaning their barbecues right now. That that's uh, that's not Sunday. It's Monday. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You see, I told you. <laughs> it's Monday. Everyone's cleaning their barbecues, you know, for the holiday. Um so yeah, so probably they'll they'll, uh, they'll 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 trickle in. So hello everybody. Uh, my name is Daphne Lage, and I am a illustrated comic book artist. 
And a cartoonist from New York. Oh, look at me trying to uh, say this stuff from memory. <laughs> Because I forgot to put my cue cards up. It's adorable. Well, you, you know, it. hey, you, got you, would this. Think, you would think I would be able to introduce myself without cue cards. But no, I'm that much of a hot mess. But that's why you love us. So there we go. <laughs> so I have been still publishing comics since 1992. And I am known for my funny animal fantasy adventure, Fall Tales, which will be launching on Kickstarter June 13th, 2022 on wow. Kickstarter. Um, the the pre launch page is live now uh so you can uh click to be notified when the campaign goes live and i am also known for my medieval fantasy soap opera drama inner raven heir of the first unicorn the trade paperback collecting volumes one through four will be launching august 22nd 2022 but it's all about tall tales now so so if you want to so if you prefer ego raven you can head on over to my website at egoworks.com um, and uh, sign up for the newsletter to get notified. And uh, yeah, so it's like, yeah, so you can read both my comics online in the meantime. Like I said, you can go to egoworks.com, E G O W R K S, or you head on over to Tall Tales online, T A I L S. And, uh, and if you head on over to YouTube where you are watching us right now, uh, you can check out all my videos on my own channel on how I make my comics at uh, Daphne Lage, L-A-G-E-R, which is also simulcast here to the Rage and Two Network. So yeah, so if you are watching us from regions beyond, if you're watching us from Facebook, if you are watching us uh, from uh, Twitter, come on over to YouTube, join our sexy people in the chat, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, get notified whenever us or any of our myriad of uh, programs uh, go live. Um, especially, you know, it's like, you know, Mike Jimmy is working really, really hard on his uh, animated uh, special for Quora. So he will have a special show for that. So, uh, so yeah, like I said, come on over to Raging 2, subscribe. Don't miss a thing. Nita, Yo. tell the people who you are. <laughs> I am Nita Lanning. I am, I don't have a cue card. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I forgot who I was. I'm a writer, <laughs> blogger, blogger from Southeast Louisiana. Uh, yeah, I wrote a bunch of shit, and I am the executive producer of the Region 2 Broadcast Network. There you go. And, and it's like, yeah, and, see, and, and just to show everybody is that, uh, you know, don't be afraid to do your own YouTube channel and do your own videos put cue cards up. If that's what it takes for you to get through uh, recording yourself, put the cue cards up. Dude. I mean, and I'll teach you a trick too. What? So it doesn't look like you're reading. Never put them here. Always put them, put them over your screen. That way it looks like you're looking at the camera. Like I used to script the entire freaking uh -huh. thing. When Mary would make me get, go solo. Ah. It was like, I'd have notes all over my, I'd have posted right. all over my computer screen. That's, you know what I did with my camera to make sure that I kind of remember to keep looking at it? Um, I, I took uh, those little plastic googly eyes <laughs> and I glued them to, uh, to, to like the little flap that covers it when it's closed. <laughs> so when you open it, you get these eyeballs looking at you. So it kind of like... You know, it kind of oh like. Oh my gosh! You gotta take oh, a picture. Is, yeah, it's like a kind of. Uh, hold on, let, let me see if. Uh, I know on my other camera. Let's see, does it come off? Yeah. So, so I had. So you have the cover here, right? Right. So this, is, this is my cover. So it goes. You know, imagine the camera there, and when you open it. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so so then it's like I know, it's like, I don't know. It automatically happens. I just start looking at making eye contact with the camera. Eye contact is important. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so eye contact is important. Me too, me too. So I, I, I remember reading this somewhere. Um, yeah, it, and, and it's like, and it seems to work. It seems to work. I, I mean, it's like, yes, it looks absolutely ridiculous. But like I said, there is no shame in whatever you have to do in order to get your work done. You know, it's like, if that's what you need to do, if you need cue cards, if you need to glue eyeballs onto your camera, it's, it's, there's, there's no shame. There's no shame. There as you. long as you're doing the work, <laughs> there's no shame in how you get there. <laughs> so. 
So, um, so yeah, so uh, I just want to thank everybody. You know, we're, we're going to be doing a little housekeeping right now. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us on Saturday for the monthly House of Bob stream. Um, so if you missed it, make sure you check out the uh, replay. Um, we had a we had a good time. Yes, I ended did. up. I uh, we were talking about Rule Thirty Four and dirty fan art and googling shit you're not supposed to. <laughs> oh my gosh! Still you know, I mean, Still really, traumatized. just because we mentioned something on that show uh, doesn't mean that we, endorse, that we <laughs> endorse. That we endorse. I would implore you not to look up some of the shit we mentioned. Right. On exactly. Show. No. Exactly. So uh, because Rule Thirty Four, that's exactly what it is. It's here to traumatize you. So and so yeah. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Although you were inspired to make a purchase because of uh, because of uh, Saturday's show. Uh -huh. Actually, it was my youngest who got it for me because of Saturday's show. They're kind of like pretty they're awesome very. Right oh, now. there we go. That's they're they're very. Uh, but I, I didn't share with her why. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. So if you want to know the secret sauce to those socks. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Check us out. On, check out the replay on uh, on Saturday's uh, show, and uh, and yeah, and like I said, it's a monthly adult uh, live stream where I draw dirty artwork. Uh, and, and Nita, uh, we just we just have this conversation, adult conversations, but in an adult way. We enjoy it, you know. We enjoy adult topics in an adult way. And our next show is going to be on June twenty fifth. Uh, we're keeping it a monthly thing. So the last Saturday of every month. So the next uh, House of Bob show will be on June 25th. Um, if you want to join us then. So do we have anything else? Any? Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't look that up either. <laughs> we are... <laughs> and we are not talking about the, the, the high cost of goods and services. <laughs> Carl, I don't put special sauce in socks. That's why I've got four kids, dude. Right? Yeah, you know. Although, although it's good to moisturize. Although it's like, do you, do you want you know you moisturize your feet and you put your socks on and then you know. Oh well, yeah, 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 yeah. You know that's what you do, right? <laughs> and then the next day you're all nice and soft. <laughs> Like yes. I get so obsessive with that. I do the gross Vaseline thing sometimes. Oh. Where you just like coat your feet in this thick, massive coat of. Vaseline because you uh -huh. know, I put that shit on everything. Like right. oh yeah, of course. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and like not sponsored. <laughs> no, yeah, not sponsored. Not, not sponsored. sponsored by but they can totally or, sponsor us. I or gold bond. We sale, are not but, sponsored by gold bond either. <laughs> but uh yeah, and then you put the socks on and it's like all night long, you're waking up wriggling your toes, like oh, oh. Yeah. the next Let's, day when you wipe that shit off. Oh my god, your feet feel so good. There you go. You see the importance of moisturizing. That's why we do it. Uh, so, is there anything, uh, anything else in housekeeping that, uh, that that we should be covering? I mean, let's. Uh, like I said, Mike Jimmy has a uh, has a show uh, coming <coughs> up. Um, yes, hung on animation with Mike Jimmy. Um, if you don't know, Mike Jimmy is doing a oh, short no, animated so special for Life on Cora, and he was showing us some examples of that animation on uh on last week's uh sunday funny it's not the one yesterday but last week's and just really amazing stuff that uh he's been able to do by himself i mean uh it, it re really made me rethink you know being so skittish about doing animation but it's like the only thing that i have uh that, that i have in the way now is uh the time <laughs> to do it so if you're interested in seeing uh how mike jimmy is doing his animated short you can check out the, his show here on the raging two uh network is there a particular is there a, an actual time for that or it's just like One he goes video. live 1 p.m. 1 PM Eastern on Wednesdays. There you go. So uh, there we go. So you can uh, you can check that out. Um. Yeah. So um, anything else too? Anything else? We hit Let's tall see. tale. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, just to, just uh, for people who who are just coming in, uh, tall tales of volume four of Thieves Quest, which completes this story arc, but not the adventure. Um, that this launches June thirteenth on Kickstarter, but the launch pre-launch page is live now, so you can hit the links in the 
show notes and in the chat uh, and get notified the second the campaign goes live because uh, the first uh, backers, uh, they all get special goodies put in their uh, packages. So uh, yeah, that's why, yeah, it's like, it's like, will you be the first nine people to get actual original art sketch cards in your pledges? Maybe you'll be one of the first 40 to get special sticker packs that I have uh, together for early, for you, all you early birds. Find out, you have to, you have to <laughs> pledge on the first day. Yes, yes exactly. What an important thing. I mean, just yesterday, JD was talking about people who, why are you not packing your books correctly? Why are there still right. people out there not packing your books correctly? It's not that difficult. Save 5% on your next Gemini mailer order with our code RAGEN2. Pack your stuff correctly. People are supporting you. They want to read your books. They want to get your books in perfect condition. You know, don't do not do the manila envelope with the chipboard. No. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Stop. And also, if you have any questions or you have a comment or you have a topic for us you want you want us to talk about, email us at ragingavc at gmail.com. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, you'll be surprised at what we'll talk about. You know, so, so yeah, so feel we'll free. We'll talk about anything. Pretty much, pretty much, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. Oh, and also... Congratulations to Sam Vera uh, of uh, who had a very see, he seemed to have a very successful um, I guess uh, run at the licensing expo in Las Vegas. Awesome, awesome. I mean his his, uh, his product was so popular. Somebody stole his banners. Get the fuck out. Somebody stole his banners. So um, so yeah. So I hope that uh, that that brings good luck onto you because if someone liked your stuff enough to steal your banners, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, that tell, that that pretty much tells you you're on the right track. So congratulations to Sam for his successful uh, foray at the licensing expo. And I really hope that, uh, that he, that he filmed it so that we can get like a really good um, overview oh, when sure. he gets back. Cause I'm really looking forward. I'm, I'm really curious as to what those things are like. So so yes, so um oh there you go, there you go. Yes, washi tape. Yes, washi tape is important. <laughs> yes, uh, because that's also important for packaging because I, I learned to use washi tape because of Nita complaining. Don't use washi, you know, don't use regular scotch tape to close up your uh comic book. Pin your uh, tape or washi tape. Yeah. It, it's like that, because yeah, because yeah. Because you you damaged you accidentally damaged a book with tape, didn't you? Oh yeah, I was pulling yeah. it out. Brand new book, limited. Uh, it was a limited run. It was pristine fucking condition. I was so excited. Pulled it out. The very bottom corner of the back stuck to the fucking scotch tape and just ripped off about a chunk. Like oh wow. Yeah, not not cool. Right. Not. And so, no, I have not, Mike Jimmy. It, it'll be probably, let's see, it's usually about three days after it says it's delivered. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. Because it's like, I guess Baton Rouge is kind of the same way as Pittsburgh is to us. That it's like once everything ends up in Pittsburgh, everything goes through Pittsburgh. I guess that there's a major hub there, mail hub. And then it's like, it's who knows when you know, when things will get delivered. So yeah, they'll even um, say it was delivered. They'll be like, "You oh. got it," and it's like I used to freak out. Now it's right. just like uh, it'll be here. Right? Yeah, it's like okay, so maybe in about three days, <laughs> it'll actually be delivered. So um, so oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, oh my god, I had such a busy weekend. That's for sure. Um, so after much debate and discussion, uh, it's like, cause you know, if you guys caught my post, I started writing my novel, uh, for the next uh, story that comes after Air of the first Eagle Raven, Air of the first unicorn. So, um, and yeah, so that's what I decided to do. I decided to go with the illustrated novel format. Um, I know that I know. I mean, I, I've been talking about this for a bit, trying to get feedback from everybody. And in the end, it just seemed like the best thing to do. 
Um, Cause I was really fighting with it. Um, I've, I've been looking over the outlines for like the past several months. I mean, this outline for this entire, the entire novel has a complete outline. And, um, and I've been like hammering at it because it's like, if I were going to do a comic, so much of it would have to have been cut out. And, um, and I was really unhappy with that. And, but at the same time, it's like, I was like going, you know, even cutting out all this stuff and, um, and doing it as a comic, it's like, oh, uh, if I, it's like, that's still a lot of time that I have to spend. And combined with the stuff that I would have to cut out, it's like, you know what? It's like, that's a lot of effort to spend on a story that I'm not going to be completely happy with because I'm going to know all the things that I had to cut out. So going, I, I went back and forth with Nita, you know, and then we came to the decision. <laughs> we, it's like, yeah, it's like that an illustrated novel would be the best way to go. Um, I would get all the prose that I didn't want to cut, all the backstory that I didn't want to cut, all those little, those little moments that I didn't want to cut. And we get the art. And you guys get the artwork. Um, and Nita kind of reassured me that um, that people, that if I, if I kind of like, if I do it that way, because cause what I wanted to do is like, I want people to read the 15, the first 15, you know, the 15 issues of the Air of the First Unicorn story arc. And then this novel just continues from there. It, it's going to be a continuation. So it's going to be one of these things where it's like, yeah, it'll kind of be a standalone story, but you get a better sense of it if you read the comics. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you read the comics and continue with the novel, um, it should be pretty seamless um, especially with the artwork to tie them, to tie everything together. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, and, and Nita assured me that I'm not going to scare everybody away with prose. <laughs> I am not. So um, I'm hoping that is the case because um, if, if uh, uh, you guys, uh, for, for those you guys who think she can draw sexy? Oh my oh, God, I can read sexy. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I'm hoping I could tell a good story <laughs> in prose um, as I can uh, with the artwork. And, and for those of you who are wondering. So not sponsored. Not sponsored, right. Um, for, um, yeah, so the story that comes after Heir of the First Unicorn is called Cult of the Wolf Witch. And for those of you really curious, this is the werewolf Loki story for all of you looking forward to it. for everyone who's been having fun with my doodles, especially the ones with Loki as a werewolf. This is the story. So I'm really happy that um, I'm able to work on it the way I want to and put in the stuff that I want to in it. So, so, uh, so yeah, so I've, I already have <laughs> between yesterday and today um, I have 7,000 words um and um yeah at this at the rate that i'm going i'm probably going to have a finished first draft and hopefully the next several months uh definitely before the end of the year so i'm looking forward to that um and also uh, one of the best things uh, about about finally confirming this format is i get to do a little research as to what illustrated books look like um so, and how I'm going to do this. I, I did mention that uh, the ElfQuest book, that a uh, novel, that uh, novelization that I remembered from back, I guess it's like, it was like the late 80s. Um, that one, you know, I, I kind of like used that as a template, although I no longer have the actual physical issue, but a uh, physical book. Uh, but I went through uh, Jose's collection. <laughs> And I started um, looking for examples of um, illustrated books. So this one that I have here is from the Folio Society, where they do um, 
I guess like premium edition books uh, with illustrations, like like they did Dune with illustrations, did The Road with illustrations, Waiting for Godot, Great Gatsby with illustrations. So this is one of the books that we have. So this is kind of like an example. Um, it's not exactly uh, what I'm looking to do, um, but like I said, it's like I want to do a little research as to kind of what I can get it to look like uh, when I'm done with the book. So this is one of the books that that I'm kind of like, uh, although this kind of deluxe edition, I wouldn't be doing, you know, it's like, I, I don't, I, <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of like, if we could get Eagle Raven to sell in like the, the tens, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of books, maybe we'll, we'll see how that goes. So um, another book, now this one's, a, this one's actually from my mother's collection. But this is also, I kind of remember it as a type of, uh, so this is, you know, like one of these, this was like back in the day when like Reader's Digest used to sell like these, like kind of like abridged editions and fancy editions or whatnot. So, so this is like another uh, example of an illustrated novel. And um, so they have a lot of the, let me, let me find one of the illustrations in here, uh, you know, so it would kind of, you know, again, just another example of what I'm looking for, although it's still not quite there. I mean, it's something that I would have to finish the story and then kind of like worry about the format at the very end. Because because, because also I have to start thinking about which, which scenes are going to get illustrations and how right. I'm going to do that. Right. So this one was pretty interesting. Again, this one was from JD's collection. Don't tell him that uh, I did this. So this one is The Illustrated Call of Cthulhu uh, with pictures by Gary Gianni um, from Flesk, which is another premium um, publisher, uh, uh, art, art, art book publisher. And this one was pretty interesting because this one's actually a little bit more... Um, a little bit more involved, a little bit more like combination of I like that format. Yeah, I mean, it's like this one kind of like there's there's a particular scene in the novel that I think that this more heavily illustrated style will work for. Right. Uh, so I'm keeping this one in mind, although um, I don't see myself doing the entire novel this way, but. Uh, at pages. least it's yeah it's yeah certain pages and at least i i have kind of like another option for that so this last one um i bought uh in uh, i bought um one to kind of like see the format and uh, two more because of its notoriety so it was kind of like a double thing here that i was doing so the, the Japanese have these things called light novels, which I guess is their equivalent of YA. And it's, and it has like illustrations in it. So I decided to choose one to, uh, to, to see what that looked like. Right. And the one that I chose to, to buy, to try this out, was the infamous Goblin, Goblin, Goblin Slayer. Slayer. Oh my goodness. So uh, I decided, I, I know nothing about this except for the hoopla that uh, happened when a crunchy roll had, I think that they had mismarked, they put it in the wrong category um, <laughs> on crunchy roll and parents completely lost their minds because from what I can tell, this is kind of like an etchy slash borderline hentai book and the fact that this is a light novel which like i said is uh what i what i read is is like kind of like their version of ya um right. kind of confuses me but i'm gonna try reading it um to kind of like get a sense of it you know and so with this one they kind of got a little fancier they have the the color images in the front a couple of pages of color and then um they have, you know, like these full, uh, these full illustrations in there. I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea of the way it bleeds like that. Um, you know, it, it's, yeah, although, yeah, I think, yeah, th there's just a lot to think about. So, so yeah, so committing to the format, um, 
really helped me focus my energy as to what um, I'm doing here. So, um, yeah, so I'm very excited about this. Like I said, I'm 7,000 words in. Um, and yeah, and I just hope that at the very end of it, it'll be something that everybody will enjoy. And because it is a novel, uh, Rob Moltari had asked me if I would consider doing it as a comic because he's dyslexic and has a hard time reading. But instead, what I figured what was more appropriate for a novel was to do an audiobook, to, to do a, a companion audiobook to it for it. So, um, so for those of you who don't like the idea of reading, but still, you know, but still, or don't have the time, you We've know, it's like, something you know, for you. Uh, I'm going to make sure to have something for you as well to to enjoy the the, the novels. So, so um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Yeah, so uh, we do have a guest today. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to throw some throw gonna, bump and bring yeah. them in. Exactly. You you, you know the drill. <laughs> Hang tight, peoples. <laughs> And we are back. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so welcome to the show. Um, so, yeah, so, we, you know, uh, luckily it's like, you know, we, we vacuumed, we cleaned, you know, so <laughs> so welcome. Well, sort uh, of. Sort of, sort of you know. <laughs> so, I, uh, I positioned my camera so it looks like I cleaned. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah. Always, as long as you're clean in the in that area, you're good. <laughs> that you know, never mind the pile of garbage that's over there. <laughs> so welcome, and uh, so tell the people uh, who you are. You know, as you come in here. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Dylan Goss, and I'm the writer of Mara, which. Uh, we're actually launching the Kickstarter in about half an hour. Oh, so, oh exciting. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so are you doing your own live stream for the launch or it's just you're going to just press the button and I'm just going to press the button. Oh, just I'm press the button. Yeah, I'm going to press the button. <laughs> I, I got enough pre-launch jitters without people uh, right. watching me on camera. Oh, no. Why did I agree to this interview? Is this your first problem? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so what was that, Nina? Uh, is this your first crowdfund? Yes, this is uh, Dude, that's an impressive first. sign up for a first timer. A hundred yeah, people. Um, that, that's impressive. Yeah, you want to bring up the Nita? You want to yeah, bring up I'll, the, yeah, the, the launch page? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so you're going to be launching on Kickstarter. Yeah. And uh, you have a hundred signups already. So uh, now the thing is though is I you have a hundred signups. It's your first Kickstarter, but well, your first crowdfund, but you didn't come out of nowhere. <laughs> so tell us tell us about Mara. So Mara is a young girl from a fishing village at the very start. Uh, her tribe is actually based on the real world Vikings and Inuit. It leads more heavily into the Inuit influence, but it is influenced by both. And um, they are a pretty peaceful tribe because they have the only river around. You know, for them, things are fairly easy. The The rest of the world has gotten a lot more harsh. There was an ecological disaster of unprecedented scale. They used to be a winter tribe. Right, so the um, it was only a matter of time before their tribe was attacked for their river. And that's, uh, that's about where we come in. Their mm -hmm. tribe is about to get attacked by a neighboring tribe, the Tsiksiv, and they, um, they are outclassed because they've been peaceful for such a long time. And also they didn't bring a demon with them. Ah, yeah. I'm going to pull up the website too, yeah, because exactly. I, want, I want to show people a little bit more of this art. I'm yeah. fascinated. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, because that's the thing you use. This is, this is actually a web comic or at least it starts yeah. off as a web comic. Yeah. It's oh. uh, we are going to have, you know, it, we're, we're planning for 10 issues and we're going to have all of them on the site. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's the best way to get more people to read it because at the end of the day, that's what I really want to right, do. Yeah, uh, I need money to create. Yeah, 
but I don't create, you know, it, if I was doing this for a profit, I would have already stopped because right. I'm not making yeah. a profit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that, that's how nice. you know, that's how you know you're an independent creator. <laughs> <laughs> It would be nice. I would love uh-huh. to make a profit off of this and make this my full-time job, mm-hmm. but that's not what's happening right now. Right, right. now, I just want uh, to reach as many people as I can. Yeah. No, it's a, uh, yeah. Cause I mean, it's, it's absolutely beautiful work and uh, you work with uh, a team on this, uh, actually kind of an unusual team because you have it, you also have it like translated and everything. So uh, yeah. tell us about your team uh, on this book. So uh, the the first person to join the team, uh, besides myself, of course, was uh, Rosie Wu, the illustrator. Um, she was also the letterer for a long time, but we have actually very recently uh, brought on a new letterer. Uh, I haven't even updated the site on that yet, but mm-hmm. Mercury is our new re- editor, uh, letterer, sorry. Uh, the, um, you know, I, when I was reaching out to artists and trying to get uh, someone to be interested in this uh, project. I went through a few different people. I had three people shortlisted and I asked each of them to make a, um, a concept art of Mara. Oh, of course I paid for this. Don't, uh, don't, oh, don't no. make people Ooh, do free work. Oh, there you yeah. go. Listen, listen um, to that, everybody out there. Yeah. <laughs> don't ask for free art. Don't, yeah. don't expect yeah. free art. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when I got Rosie's, I got hers first, and I said, oh, man, those, those other guys better wake up real early in the morning to top this. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and they were good. They, they were legitimately good, but they didn't top it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I had, I had to go with the one that I wanted to see more art from. Right, yeah, yeah. And so she joined Hearst, and uh, initially I didn't have any... Um, any plans on translating. What happened was uh, I have a buddy who is in game development and um, he had a friend who had just graduated as a professional translator. He, he would, he would oh. be translating in, in court, uh-huh. but he wanted to get into comics because he likes comics and just mm-hmm. a little a side project, but uh, the schedules didn't work out with him, which is fine. But the, uh, the idea had already been planted. You know, he was going to do Spanish. So I thought, well, I can just get another Spanish translator. And uh, around this point, Rosie said, well, you know, I would really like to share this comic with my friends and family, and they don't all speak English. So um, maybe I could do Chinese translation. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So she, she's been doing Chinese translation. And I, I posted about the fact that it's translated in a Facebook group for uh, comic creators. And that's when Rogerio approached me and he said, hey, if you need Portuguese. And at the time, I just said, you know what? Sure. Why not? Right. right? I didn't really think much of it. I was just like, yeah, so like, no, Let's go worldwide. Yeah, let's go worldwide. But uh, at this point, actually, about half of my Facebook followers are from Brazil. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, Brazilian comic fans, I didn't know at the time, were this passionate about comics. Uh-huh. So if you're creating a comic and you only have the bandwidth or the budget for one translator, right? get Portuguese because... Right. <laughs> oh, I gotta get my mom on that then. <laughs> Yeah, she could, she could do, because uh, there was, uh, I, I had, uh, I was experimenting with that years ago, and I had her do, like, I think it was, like, like 10 pages or something in Spanish, but she could also do Portuguese, and it's like, oh, well, now that you mentioned that, <laughs> so maybe I should revisit the idea. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it caught me off guard. I, I mm-hmm. was quite surprised, but, uh, you know, I'm... I'm not trying to specifically reach people in any uh, particular country. So uh-huh. if if Brazil is happy to have me, I'm happy to have them. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So did you? Uh, so did you always start off as writing comics, or did you uh, start writing something else and then kind of end it yeah. up in comics? So I, I grew up on comics, and that really should have told me I should be in comics. But at the time, I 
had this impression that you had to be able to draw as well. Right? Mm-hmm. If you if you weren't an illustrator, you you weren't you didn't get into comics. That that was my thought at the time, and uh, I didn't really uh, come back to that because you know when I when I got older, I met my wife and she introduced me into manga. And a lot of the time, the writers are also the illustrators, so that really just reinforced the idea in my head. Yeah. Um, but um, I tried a few different things. Of course, I tried novels because that's what you can write on your own. That is pretty mm-hmm. much the definition of a solo writer project. Right. Um, it ju- it didn't feel like it had the impact I wanted. I never ended up attempting to publish anything um, because it just felt off to me. It, it didn't really matter if I showed my friends and they liked my work. It just didn't click for me, so I never released it. And uh, then I became a software engineer as my day job. And I thought, well, if I'm already developing software, why can't I just go into game development and tell stories that way? Well, I was younger and not as good at managing projects as I am now. And that was a failure for a variety of reasons. But it was actually a bad idea from the start just because what I wanted to do was tell a story. I didn't want to create a game. And while a good game can have a good story, that's not what makes a game good. It has mm. to actually be enjoyable to play. You're not just leading people by the nose. Right. Unless I guess you're making a visual novel. But right, I was probably, about to say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, visual novels, I mean, I've, I've seen some visual novels with some really good stories, but sometimes I've had to tap out just because I don't want to keep hitting the space bar every dialogue line. Right. Yeah, that is. So that, I, yeah, I, I'm playing a, a game slash visual novel like that now. Um, although I have to put that on the side now because I'd rather work on my own own novel. But yeah, hitting that space bar for every it's probably the most annoying thing. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I, I definitely read a lot faster than the auto scroll. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, when I started making this game, it still didn't click for me. Even though I had the instead of normal cinematics, I had them drawn up as comic pages. Ah, it, it really should yeah. have clicked for me that uh-huh. uh, I wanted to do comics, but somehow it didn't. And uh, what? What really drove it home for me, I was in the theater with my wife and we were watching Logan. And it's a great movie, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the scene that really did it for me, and I'm I'm going to actually say that Mara wouldn't exist if not for Daphne Keen's performance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can and you can definitely see the influence, especially in the first chapter when she gets her powers uh, of that first scene. When, when she appears yeah. on screen and she is displayed as more animal than human. Yeah. Right. Actually, that was that was the thing that, I mean, now that you mention it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is a direct correlation. But that was kind of the part that I really enjoyed uh, when I was reading Mara. You know, usually I don't look up things it's like oh we have a guest okay but the second i saw the artwork on it i just got it it's just like oh let me start reading it and then of course you know and what i really enjoyed was that whole thing is that she gets i guess the way i interpret it that she gets possessed by a god and the um the trade-off is that she turns feral (laughs) while she has her powers yeah you know like so it's like either she has her powers or she's just a, a, a normal girl, but it's like, you know, I, I just, I just like the idea of that trade-off. Yeah. 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 She, um, she definitely lost some of herself when, uh, she allowed that, uh, spirit guardian to possess her. Um, because I mean, in, in uh, in her position, it's, not difficult to justify you know you Mm -hmm. you're in a lot of danger and there's no one who can help you so are you going to take this deal or not right right um and in chapter two we see further how it kind of has blurred the line between mara and amaro and it weakened the link between her mind and body Mm -hmm. she'll act without thinking and she'll have an internal monologue going while everything is happening around her right. as if she's mentally disconnected from the fight. 
Right. I mean, <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> now, so the uh, so is so so what is uh, going to be offered on this crowdfunder? Is it is it a collection of what's online already, or is it something else? Uh, what we're going to do is first is print the first issue, uh, and we have uh, we have a stretch goal to get the uh, to get the second issue in PDF as well, yeah. because the PDF is higher quality than on the site. It would just take too long to load if we had right, that quality yeah. on the site. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we have we have that as a stretch goal, and um, besides that, we have we have some other cool art pieces. Uh, we had a guest artist come on. Uh, Mercury, I mentioned earlier, is our letterer now. She started as a guest artist. Uh, she did a sticker and a couple of postcards for the campaign. Um, the uh, the other thing that I'm looking forward to, actually, is Mara's axe on a keychain. That That's oh, my favorite yeah. part of uh -huh. all of it. Um, uh -huh. Another thing we have, though, is uh, because Mara is actually very popular with the D&D crowd, um, it, the the world itself has its roots in the D&D setting Dark Sun. There, mm. there are definitely similarities there, and it was uh, it, it was inspired in part by Dark Sun. And, of course, as we move into Chapter 2, it becomes very Dungeons and Dragons. You got Dungeons, you got Dragons, you got Right. Party, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my influences there are pretty clear. Right. Um, so because we have this following in the tabletop gaming community, we're also offering a, uh, a, a mini for your for your tabletop, oh, huh. which I have actually Ooh. right next to me, and I've painted up my very own because oh, I'm also a exciting. painter. exciting. So let me see if I can oh. get this focused on camera for oh, you. Oh, wow. Okay. Actually, let, let's, let's, let's see. Let's... Ooh. Oh, look at that. Huh? Yeah. So you paint miniatures? Like, yeah. that's your hobby? One of your hobbies? <laughs> that is one of my hobbies, yeah. Right. I, uh, I have a lot of miniatures I've painted. I have a right. huge collection of paint literally uh -huh. right next to me right now. Right. Um, <laughs> so so we I see have... like Martin Scorsese glasses in your future, right? Like, they're like the, the lenses are that thick. Yeah, I, I, I don't have those already. <laughs> yeah, you... I know, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool though. So is, uh, so did, uh, so did you do the 3D sculpt? Uh, I did well? not do the 3D sculpt. Mm -hmm. I uh, commissioned someone for that. Okay. And just doing that, oof, that was an adventure. Right. I, uh, I know how to do it now, but I was right. learning how to find someone to do mm -hmm. it. And um, um, can can you yeah. share your process a bit? Because that's kind of sure. something I'm I'm kind of beginning to look into, and I'm a little intimidated at that process. You can just tell us really quick what that sure, entails. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll I'll give you the uh, the crib notes version. Uh -huh, okay. So, once you have your idea, the first thing you need is concept art of the character. You know, typical uh, neutral pose back and front. And um, that's important for the modeler to see all of the details of your character. Mm -hmm. The next thing you're going to need is, a, is the action pose. Now, the action pose is going to be possibly modified by the sculptor. Because um, for 3D print, you need to have a solid connection to the base mm. or else things are going to fall apart while you're printing. You're going to have failed prints. Um, or, of course, you could get it done in multi-part. That's a, that's a discussion you have to have with mm. the sculptor. I went for a single piece um, because it is less prone to failure, you know. Uh, I, uh, I've had a 3D printer for a while, and uh, while I pretty much have the formula down, I do still get failed prints mm. for whatever reason. Either the parts were too small, the supports didn't work, whatever other things. I, wanted to, I just want to minimize the number of problems people run into, because at the end of the day, I'm selling you fun. I don't want to right, be selling yeah. you problems. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, to find the uh, sculptor, though, I went through a lot of different uh, different networks, and um, 
I can tell you what doesn't work, but what did work for me is going through my mini factory. My mini factory is, uh, if you're not familiar, they sell uh, 3D models online. So you, yeah, you can just buy it and download it to your printer. And it's, based, it's like a marketplace, like Etsy, oh, okay. but, for, uh, but for 3D models, exclusively digital. And uh, I just searched for some uh, related terms in uh, in my opinion, in my uh, case, I went for barbarian. That was uh -huh. the first term I searched because I have a I have a big influence from Conan the Barbarian. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, and I just collected artists that I liked and asked them if they were doing commissions. And uh, some of them said no. Some of them didn't reply. Some of them were way out of my budget. Uh, you know, the there was one guy who did beautiful work, but he wanted 1500 euros. Wow. And, okay. You know, uh, he's, he's worth every penny, but I'm sorry, mm. I'm not there yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the budget, the, the, the budget, uh, wasn't just yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, I found, uh, I didn't go for the cheapest one. I've, I found, uh, I found my favorite that I could afford mm -hmm. and I went with that and we had some back and forth and, Eventually, he showed me some. Uh, he showed me some samples, and um, we made very minor adjustments. I mean, by the time we got to that stage, he was he was in good understanding of what I wanted. Right. Oh, that's cool. Did he specialize in miniatures, or was he just an overall three D sculptor? And you just uh, his uh, his his store is only miniatures. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. he specialized. Okay. Yeah, so specializes. There, there's okay. So there are people who specialize. In All right. I, I didn't know that. But then again, I don't know why that surprises me. You know. So so with uh, Marrow, what? So were you writing? So so did you have like other ideas before you got to Mara, or was Mara just something that I need to write? this story mara was the reason i got into comics mm -hmm. uh at this point i have several other scripts on my hard drive and in my cloud stores just mm -hmm. in case i ever uh -huh. get around to them but <laughs> <laughs> that old gag <laughs> yeah um but yeah that was what got me started writing mm -hmm. comics um and you know when uh, when i saw that performance in the theater it's it just stuck with me and the way i write you know i've um even though i have never been published i've been writing for a long time and if i get an idea i have to write it down i i won't be able to sleep until i write it down right so this, this is going to this is going to keep bothering me right I yeah do, you know and uh, when i when i started writing this down i was like ah I really got to make this one a comic, don't I? Uh, how do I, how do I do this? So I reached out to, um, I reached out to a buddy of mine who uh, I've worked with before. When I was a freelancer, she would do design work, and she's also the one who did the comic pages for the cinematic for the game I was working mm -hmm. on before. And since I knew she did comic, right? Like, hey. Uh, Lois, you want to work on this comic? But she only does sci-fi. And said, well, you know, I'll reach out to some of my friends and see if they're interested. Now, that's a very downplayed version of what actually happened. What actually happened is she put out a bulletin to her art school contact. And I had 15 emails in my <laughs> inbox that night. There you go. Uh, hey, where, wherever, whatever it takes. Right? Yeah. At least you had your pick of the litter. <laughs> definitely did. Definitely yeah. did. A lot of good artists. Uh, some of them mm -hmm. presented themselves better than others, but mm -hmm. none of them were actually bad artists. Right. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, what was like the like? Okay, because you had said before that it's like you chose the artwork that you felt I guess was like this is what I want. Right. But it's like you said. You, you said everyone was a good artist. But the press, like some presentations were better than others. Did presentation like kind of was also an influencer or, or was it just you saw the yes. style? And um, that was it? I, there were some people that I did not shortlist because they did not have portfolios. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah. You would think I, that if they're in yeah. art school, they would have had one already. <laughs> Oh, like they would just send me a few attachments like, oh, here's some stuff I've drawn. Right. Well, can I? can I go through and reference your work? Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a website? Right. Oh, no, I don't have that. 
Wow. Okay. okay. So, so in this age of social media, there, there's still a lot of people who don't know that it's like, this is how you showcase yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very, yeah. Uh... And what, one of the things I learned while I was doing this is that artists uh, will actually have several styles. And it's very common for a single artist to have a few different styles mm -hmm. they're comfortable with. Right. And, uh, that that was actually a surprise to me. I kind of expected one artist, one style. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I thought that, but that was right. just the idea I had. And um, when I was looking at their work, I was like, "Wow, some of this is some of this is very traditional Western comic book style." Which is um, it was a surprise to me because all of these uh, people were from Taiwan mm. because oh, that's okay. that's that's where you know that's where I live and that's where my mm -hmm. A designer friend lived so of course all of her art school friends would be Taiwanese as well mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the the guy I almost hired uh, he had a, he had a very he had a very interesting comic style but the way he interpreted Mara um, it it wasn't as appealing to me mm -hmm. uh, he went for more of a realistic anatomy ah version. right yeah and you know it's good art but it also is not what i was going for i was right. I'm going for like a, a high fantasy right uh -huh. like uh like, like that yeah it's it's there there was there's a certain kind i mean i really like that's the style that i gravitate to as well like there's just something really you know like like there's that's it's cartoony but it still has enough realism to it but uh, i don't know i just feel that like for me personally it just allows me to do more with the design of the characters than if say you're 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 working with somebody who draws like Jim Lee. You know, it's like there's there's a certain looseness yeah. that that well, you're I mean to work Mara with. is yeah. Mara is eight in right. uh, the comic. And um I I don't know. It's just the um the manga style representation that mm -hmm. uh the Rosie went for was a lot more appealing to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the other shortlister leaned more heavily into the Viking influence. Right. Ooh. And I initially did as well. Uh huh. But Rosie's influence on me actually has made the the Inuit influence come out more. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I really liked how it came out. And right. We we had more discussions, and I started thinking about it, and. Um, there's a lot of Viking stuff out there. And I right. Like oh, it, yeah. Obviously. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love the I'm Viking I'm knee deep stuff. in that, too. <laughs> yeah. But there's just so much of it. Right. And you know what there isn't a whole lot of? Right. So the it, it's, if I'm going to present something that right. I'm going to say is unique, then I'm going to go for something that has right. less representation. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, and it's fine because I was going to ask you, like, how did you come with to that combination because like just the, like i said I, i'm knee deep in, in all this viking stuff you know research purposes and uh, <laughs> you know because that's what happens you start you know you start researching something and you just get obsessed you know and um and i came across a youtube channel where they were kind of mixing i guess like viking music with like inuit slash native american music and it was just like really, really fascinating to listen to. And I was like going through the comments and they were talking about how like Canada, like especially in Canada, that's actually a, a pretty big thing. Um, and I, I'm kind of wondering, where did you get that combination from? Or is it, was it something that's, that's actually referencing something? Or you just thought, oh, Vikings, Inuit. <laughs> uh, I... Um... I, I, when I was doing my research on Vikings and winter tribes, because I wanted, what I wanted to do is display what a cold weather tribe would look like after an ecological disaster that forced them to become a warm weather tribe. So as I'm looking into uh, Vikings and, you know, um, Arctic survival in general, of course, I came across the Inuit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was just, it was fascinating. And, um, I couldn't, af after reading a little bit, I read a little bit more and then a lot more. And after doing that, I couldn't not include it. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So uh, we're just hitting the top of the hour. I want to thank you again uh, for yep. uh, sharing uh, this, uh, sharing your, your book with us, Mara. Um, so, yeah, so everybody, uh, he's going to press the button. In I just pressed it. Oh, he just, just pressed, pressed it. it. We're live right now. <laughs> yep, just pressed so it. So head on over to, we're going to put links in the chat, links in the show, in the show notes. notes. I'm going to be going over there myself, <laughs> you know, so... Uh, because, you know, let's, you know, it's like, okay, let, let's, like I said, what I've seen on the, the web comic, it's like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> so, so I'll be visiting your, uh, your uh, crowdfunder as well. So, um, so yeah, so it's live right now. Go check it out. Go support it. Um, if you want, I guess, like, if you want to see more of it, go on over to his website, read the webcom. You can read it in the webcomic format as well and then support him on his Kickstarter. So uh, actually, speaking of that, why don't you uh, just tell everybody where they can find you? <laughs> uh, you can find the comic at mara-comic.com. There you go. It's that, it's that simple, everybody. That's no simple. excuses. No excuses. So on that note, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming. Thank everybody in the chat. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I hope that uh, you, you enjoyed this interview. And you go check out uh, Mara um, on Kickstarter right now as we speak. So if you want to see more of my own artwork, um, you can head on over to my main portfolio site at egoworks.com, E-G-O-W-O-R-K-S, where you can find links to all of my galleries and social media sites. But I mostly post to Facebook where you can see sketches and the gallery, uh, my uh, my current work in progress, whatever I'm working on. And, and yeah, and I do have an, uh, an art gallery on uh, Facebook as well. And uh, you can also check out both my websites uh, where you can read Eagle Raven, Air the First Unicorn, in its original black and white format for free. But if you prefer your comics to be more of a Lord of the Rings type of adventure, head on over to talltalesonline.com. Uh, Link is also at EagleWorks. And you can read the first 20 issues of Tall Tales for free. So, Nita, where can the people find you? Uh, posting shit right now. Uh they can find me anywhere on Raging, anything Raging promos, uh, the Raging Mature page, Twitter uh, at C underscore chaos two four seven, and Facebook as Nina Lanning. Right. Oh, and before I forget, so uh, the second week we go off the air, uh, JD Calderon is uh, also going live on the Raging Two Network with Philip Russert, where they'll be talking about Ooh. his book Tragedy. Tragedy. So they're they're literally interviewing right now. So everything's going on today. So don't miss a thing. So. Thanks again to everybody. Um, I'll see you guys on Wednesday uh, afternoon for my regular, my regularly scheduled uh, live, uh, art live stream from four to six. We'll see you again uh, with Nita um, on Friday at 11 uh, a.m. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks everybody. And uh, as always, uh, eat your food, moisturize, you know, mind your business and do the work because when you actually do the work, you never have to fake your accomplishments. So see you then. Hit the Bye. button. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm.